Hey everyone, my name is Colin Humphrey and today I'm going to show you how I changed the head on my snare drum. This snare is a 14 by 8 cedar made by HHG Drums. It's got a contour stave construction giving it a full body and bright tone at a wide range of tunings. As you can see, this drum is truly a piece of art and I'm honored to be able to play it. We're going to be swapping out the Evans stock head that came with the drum for a Remo Power Stroke 3. I'm not usually an Evans guy, but I loved the sound out of the box. After some tuning and adding the snare weight that I prefer, it sounded awesome, so I stuck with it. This is both a testament to the Evans head and to the power of tuning and muffling. Even with an average to below average head, you can still get a great sound with proper tuning and muffling. Now I did some research and I found out that the Power Stroke 3 was the sound that I was going for. I've had luck with uh, Power Stroke 3s in the past and I was confident that uh, with this type of drum I can get a good sound out of it, so hopefully it works for me going forward. Uh, to get started, I usually uh, take off all the muffling, obviously. Uh, I start by just going one half turn or one full turn each lug to slowly take off pressure going around the head. Uh, it, like, like the pitch pairing I talked about before, it's not exactly necessary. You could go full tension off and it wouldn't make a huge difference, but I tend to avoid the chance of you know warping a rim or warping the head if I need to use it later in an emergency by just going slight tension off all the way around until your lugs are completely loose. Like I said, in an emergency, if you need to take all the tension off one at a time just for uh, the sake of speed, go for it, you know. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take these off one turn at a time until we're completely loose, and then we'll be back to get the new head on and start the process of tightening down. So now that we have the head off, I like to do a little drum maintenance at this point. Take a paper towel or a chamois, Wipe down your bearing edges, wipe down the rims, make sure nothing made its way inside the drum and is resting on the bottom head, and generally just give it a one over. It's not a super necessary step if you're in a rush, but it's something to increase the longevity of your drum and make sure that no imperfections are affecting the sound of your drum. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe down my rims and the bearing edges, and then we'll move forward with getting the new head on the drum. So now that we've done a little cleaning, we've got the head on and the rim lined up. Uh, first thing, make sure that your logo is lined up where you want it. I've done it countless times where I put the, put the head on, forgot to line up the logo where I wanted, and it was a tad ask you, and I didn't like it. So I had to redo everything, and that's really annoying. Same thing goes for the bottom head. If you're switching a bottom head, make sure your snare beds line up with your snare throw. That's, even a more, uh, that's an even more common one, putting on your bottom head and then realizing you can't put your snares on because your bottom rim snare beds, if you have them, aren't lined up with your snare throw. So go ahead and uh, make sure that those things are in line. Uh, something to keep an eye on in the heat of uh, changing drum heads. Uh, first step of getting the drum tightened for me is going around, lining up the, the lugs, uh, doing a few turns on the fingers, and then going around individually and getting them as tight as possible just using your fingers. Uh, for me, this provides a good solid base of like general tightness around the head and a good starting point to start, you know, cranking with a drum key without having to go in, you know, insane depth with a, a, a drum dial or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start turning, turning these with my hands until that I've got them as tight as I can all the way around using just my hands. So now that we've got the head finger tight, you should have something like this. Obviously not a very appealing sound. So next step, go around and do either a full turn or a half turn, whatever, uh, whatever feels right to the lug. Some lugs are going to get looser as you go around. So you might have to do a turn and a half, something like that, but go around and give each lug a little more tension until you start to recognize tones out of the head and each individual lug. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now let's go one pass around. You'll hear a lot of cracking. That's completely normal for the glue to crack on a head and each head's gonna be different. At some point, some heads you're gonna get tones way earlier than other heads, and so on and so forth. Same with finger tightening. Some, some uh, lugs can go way farther using just the hands, others can't. So that's one turn around. Significantly higher already. I can see I'm getting a bit more creasing up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this half some more tension. And this is really where the art of tuning comes in. It's about making those adjustments and not saying, Oh, well, the YouTube video I watched, you know, told me to do one quarter around and that, that'll make the drum perfect. Obviously, it's hypocritical for me to say that in a YouTube video, 
But that's my best advice. Go out there, change heads, learn how to adapt. Um, you know, if I, in my younger days, I would have just, you know, went around and did the same turns and ended up with this half completely lower than the other half. You might catch that later on, but it's, it's much uh, better for the drum and tuning in general to do it all at the same time. So now I'm going to go around and tap and see if I can recognize tones. Generally pretty good. Nothing is really sticking out to me. So I'm going to go ahead and give it another half turn, I think. Let's go with the quarter turn. That's another part of the art of tuning is understanding how much to turn. I like the phrase, I take what the lugs give me. I know that is kind of convoluted, but you can kind of feel how much pressure or how many turns are needed based on the pressure of the lug already. You don't want to overexert it, but you also want to keep uh, going up in tone. Right? So we're at a place now, what I would call probably uh, really low tuning, obviously. So I'm going to go around and try and see if I can get some tones again. Nothing crazy sticking out there. At this point, if you want to get real intricate with it, you can bust out your drum dial, start doing that. I'm going to throw the snare on. If you're going for a low tuning, that's not a bad sound. I'm going to be honest. For me, at least, in my opinion. Uh, let, me throw, uh, let me throw my snare weight on and see what it sounds like. I also have an internal muffle on my snare, on the uh, HHG, which is something uh, I think all snare drums could, uh, should come with, an internal muffle. Uh, shout out to Sam at HHG for including that in all his drums. Uh, it's an incredible detail that I love. Not a bad sound whatsoever. I'm quite, uh, quite pleased with that. I'm going to go ahead and give it another half turn and see where we're at. That's obviously a low tuning, but with the right amount of muffling and the style of play being considered, that could be a very reasonable tuning for a lot of people out there, including myself. I don't mind that tuning whatsoever. That being said, I like to take it a little higher. Uh, that way it gives the head uh, some time to settle in, break in, and it's obviously going to drop a lot. You know, even with this brand new head, if I give it a super high tuning, if I play one song, it's going to drop a couple pitches by the end of the song. So uh, there's no point in really trying to, trying to get the tone that you're looking for off the bat because it's going to vary. So we're just trying to get it into a ballpark of what we like and uh, uh, a ballpark of evenness around the head. So let's check the uh, check around and see how even we're getting. Pin these back, maybe. Snares off. And when you're doing this, when you're tuning, always have the snares off so you can get a clear picture of the tone. Not too bad at all. Sorry about the snares on the... Uh uh, the axial snare drum by a British drum company over there. So with the tuning, it's got a great body to it. Let's try to play that. That's a great top head sound for me. Uh, listening to this, I can tell that I need to tune my bottom head a bit to get it up to uh, the tone that matches this top head. I'm getting a bit of an overtone and a power struggle between the two, the top and bottom head. Uh, but other than that, I really like the tone of this top head so far. Nice full body sound. Uh, staccato, but also very powerful and has a nice overtone to it with the muffling off. Let me turn the muffling on real quick. I don't know how quality that's going to sound through this mic, but here to me, it sounds like a solid snare drum and something that would be a good starting point for me. Uh, I'd probably go, I'll probably go another quarter turn around just to get it up uh, past where I want it to be so that it drops a little into that sweet spot. And even then, it's going to drop more continuously throughout the life. Uh, don't hesitate to keep on tuning the drum up to adjust for head stretch and things like that. Uh, yeah, I think we're at a good point here. I know a lot of the stuff I talked about was quite general, but like I said, the best way to learn this stuff is to go out and do it, honestly. 
switch some heads around, and if you mess up, so what? Take it off and do it again. It's a learning experience. You want to start to notice the patterns uh, every time you do it. Oh, last time, you know, this end, this side ended up way too low, or last time I didn't like the overtone. Figure out a way to adjust and, and make it better. You know, figure out some better muffling. Figure out maybe it's not the type of head. Do some triage and find out what's working for you and what isn't working for you. So before I start smacking this new head, I wanted to give some context about what it sounded like before. So here's a clip from my Vader 5B variety pack video to give you an idea. Now it's time to hear what the new head sounds like. This is a quarter crank more than what I had over at the tuning station, and I also tuned the bottom head up another half turn. This is still a very low tuning, but I like to keep it generally low to try and avoid breaking a head off the bat and give it some time to stretch out and breathe. So here we go. Oh man, this thing is sounding fat and funky. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was informative. Keep on drumming and best of luck. Thank you.